I am the Kaiji no Kami, and tonight I'm going to continue Halloween month with a look at my top 10 favorite classic universal horror movie films. Number 10. Kicking this list off is The Invisible Man. What? Why are you looking at me like that? It's like you can see right through me. Claude Rains gives a solid performance as a man who is practically invisible throughout the entire feature. As such, Rains had to ensure the audience could understand his emotions and desires through his voice and body language for the scenes when our titular character covered himself in bandages and clothing. The story is enjoyable despite being a bastardization of Wells' novel, and the special effects used are absolutely stunning. Number 9. Who doesn't like dead things? Who doesn't like seeing dead things come back to life? especially those surrounding Egyptian mythology, the mummy's hand is next on my list. Well, it doesn't compare to the tragic story of Emotep, and it does reuse a lot of footage from its predecessor during its flashback scenes, the mummy's hand ends up being a unique sequel due to having the mummy itself be an entirely different character. Though, he is pretty much nothing more than a banished mummy without any sort of personality compared to Emotep, it is the mythology this film invokes that really defines Karis. Add on top a likable cast and you have yourself a pretty enjoyable sequel, even if it is vastly inferior to what it follows. Number 8. The next one on the list is kind of tough to talk about because it's a sequel, but I obviously haven't covered the original since that's going to be later on the list. And that is The Wolfman Meets Frankenstein. The Frankenstein series has had by far the best sequels of Universal's horror series as they tended to all try something new. This was the first time two different movie series ever crossed paths and it was done quite intelligently. Larry finds himself living once more due to his werewolf curse and tries to find a doctor that could kill him by giving his life energy to the monster. These events lead to a climactic showdown between a transformed Larry and said monster. All in all, it may not be the best written crossover and it does lack a lot of atmosphere, but it is a fun one. Number 7. Before the Avengers, before Destroy All Monsters, there was the House of Frankenstein. This was like the Avengers of the 40s. Here we get a movie that not only features the Wolfman and Frankenstein's monster again, but we are also treated to a sympathetic Dracula portrayed by the great John Carradine. A hunchback, and of course the staple of all creature stories, the mad scientist. The only downside is that Dracula dies before ever getting to interact with the rest of the cast. Nevertheless, the fact that Universal decided to pull off something unheard of at the time allows me to give them some leeway, and those that would like to see what the most ambitious film was at the time should definitely check it out. Number 6. The Frankenstein series probably was Universal's best as far as sequels go because they had a really strong run of sequels compared to all their other series in this franchise. Nevertheless, the next one on my list is one that is often considered the best sequel of all time, or at least the best of the Universal classic ones, and I really can't agree with that, but it's a solid piece of entertainment nonetheless, and that is The Bride of Frankenstein. It tries something new, yet it also makes quite a few missteps in my book. I just don't like how different Boris Karloff looks compared to the first film, especially considering this is supposed to be a direct continuation of Frankenstein taking place only mere minutes after its ending. Additionally, it adds in a little too much comedy that feels out of place. On the other hand, it does feature a well-told story, starts to develop the monster by showing his human side, along with putting a unique twist on a vital character from Mary Shelley's original novel, and more. I may not find it to be anywhere near the best as others do, but that does not diminish its significance and enjoyability one bit. Number 5. Hey, another Frankenstein film, this time the son of Frankenstein. Frankenstein. You're putting me on. No, it's pronounced Frankenstein. No, not that. Never mind. While many believe Bride to be the best Frankenstein sequel, among other things, I feel this film is superior to that one and a very underrated one. It takes place years after Bride, featuring the son of Henry Frankenstein, who moves to his father's ruined estate and discovers his father's journal, allowing him to also go mad with ambition to bring life back to the dead. It is a well-plotted, well-paced piece of entertainment that everyone who enjoyed the first two should definitely check out. Number 4. I feel like I Frankenstein this list together because here is 
Frankenstein. The best adaptation of Mary Shelley's novel to date, despite being vastly different from her original works. Nevertheless, no one can discount how important this movie was in defining the Frankenstein monster's design, as even to this day, when we think of the monster, we think of Karloff. The film is quite atmospheric with a lot of gothic tones and concepts that seem to be missing from other adaptations, even today. Boris Karloff gives a fine performance as we feel sympathy for the creature, not only because of his humanity, but also because he is like a lost little child who has found himself in a world that misunderstands him. If you want a tragic being that shows the worst in humanity, you have come to the right place. Number three. Next on my list is a hairy situation. The Wolfman. This is a story of a man who returns home from his brother's untimely death and has to reconnect with his father in his town. Unfortunately for Larry, his string of bad luck does not end there as he finds himself attracted to an engaged woman, while also getting bit by a werewolf as he unsuccessfully attempts to save the woman's friend. This leads him on a path of destruction as he himself becomes a werewolf by night, thanks to the longest full moon cycle ever. No seriously, how many days did a full moon last back then? He transforms at least three nights in a row, and there's a fourth if you count the original werewolf. That aside, Lon Chaney Jr. puts one of his best performances as the tragic Larry Talbot in a story that would kickstart how audiences would view werewolf movies for decades to come. Hell, I still think this is the best werewolf story ever, despite its scientific side being dated. Number two. If you don't clean out your pool, you don't know what might end up in it. You may even find yourself visited by the creature from the Black Lagoon. A discovery in the Amazon rainforest leads a group of scientists to set out on an expedition to find what could be the link between fish and man, only to find themselves in peril. Creature from the Black Lagoon introduces us to my favorite universal monster, the Gill Man, who stalks and kills our scientists without any rhyme or reason for it. Well, it is possible he's just protecting his territory, but we will never know since these evil mad scientists decide to go out for blood and vengeance. I kid. I can't. It's a wonderful movie that is creative and breathes life into a genre that was nearly dead by the 50s, at least in a traditional sense. Honorable mansions. Is she alright? She's alive. <laughs> See before you a man who lived for centuries, kept alive by the blood of innocent people. Number one. If you've seen my top horror movie list of all time, you know what number one is. If you haven't, you've probably heard me talk before about how much I love Egyptian mythology. That's right, you've probably guessed it by now, but number one on my list is The Mummy, or as I also like to call it, Dracula done right. An ancient priest named Imhotep falls in love with a priestess who dies and he is caught trying to resurrect her. As such, he is mummified alive and cursed, which leads to Imhotep's resurrection, learning his love was reincarnated and trying to bring her back to him. Boris Karloff plays the emotionless yet emotional Imhotep in a performance unlike any other he has ever done prior or after. Add on top all of the mythology and interesting ideas along with the atmospheric setting and you have yourself not only the best of Universal's horror classic library, but also one of the greatest horror films of all time. This is not one to miss out on. Yeah, I know this book is kind of falling apart. It's just old, like these movies. I hope you've enjoyed this list. Tell me in the comments what your favorite movies are from this era, from Universal. Do you have a favorite creature from any of them? Whether it's the Frankenstein monster, the Gill Man, the Wolf Man, Dracula, or whatever, Emotep, maybe you prefer Karis. Let me know, and until next time, as we conclude Halloween month, bye. <laughs>
I've always wanted to say that.